Hello, everybody, and welcome here to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is a channel that is designed to help those of you that want to learn more about the world of wine, the wonderful world of wine. So if you're specifically interested in a topic such as Spanish sparkling wine like this video, you'll find it very interesting. Okay, so we are looking at sparkling wines um, within Spain. So of course, this is focusing on Cava. And this part is looking at the newer developments of the subzones across the Cava areas, mainly Catalonia, but also the outlying areas across Spain. So we'll go into great detail about that, uh, and we're going to begin with the Contact of Barcelona to start with. Okay, well, let's rock and roll, looking at all things uh, Carver regions. So just as an overview, you'll see that here is the Iberian Peninsula, and I've highlighted areas in Spain where one can find that Carver is produced. So you see the yellows, the greens, the beige, the red on this map. We will in turn focus on each of these areas so you'll get a better understanding of the specific zones. So, of course, the most important to look at uh, in terms of a lot of history behind Carver, but also then production, is going to be the Comtat de Barcelona. So let's have a closer look at that. So here you are in terms of its map. Most of it sits in between Barcelona and Tarragona but you'll find some outliers there as well. The Comtat de Barcelona, which is a subzone of Cava, is further broken down into five zones. Serra del Mar, the Val de Noia Foch, the Conca de Gaia, Serra de Pradas, and then the Pla de Ponent. So these are the five that we will look at in turn. Now, this whole area, the Comtat de Barcelona, accounts for about 95% of Cava production. Uh, so, of course, it is here where we find the real sort of spiritual home of Spanish sparkling wine, specifically in the municipality of San Sederni de Noia. It's considered often the capital of Carver, and who doesn't like a little bit of alliteration? Now, we know from the previous video that focuses on history that first traditional method sparkling wines were produced in San Sederni de Noia, in 1872. So this area, broadly speaking, has a Mediterranean climate with bright, sunny summers, mild winters, and rainfall, which would be described as moderate, about 500 to 550 millimeters per year. Now, the vineyards range from coastal zones to higher altitudes that are inland, with the largest extent being at around sort of seven to 800 meters. Now, once you do get into the inland, like the Pla de Ponent, or really the more kind of inland interior part of the Val de Noia Foch, then you will find that here the summer nights can be distinctly cool, producing grapes with more intense flavours and higher acidity than grapes grown at typically lower altitudes. The geology, the terroir, the soils also do vary. So from alluvial soils and clay at lower altitudes to those stony clays and granitic subsoils at higher altitudes. All soil types are relatively poor in nutrients with adequate drainage and also good water retention, making them, of course, suitable for viticulture. Now, these variations express themselves in the, of course, quite wide diversity of styles that one will find. Give you a bit of an example, Macabeo based style carvers that are grown from Macabeo grapes grown at high altitude will have more flavor and more acidity from those grown towards the sea level, giving them a much more stronger ability to age, for example. And of course, we don't just stick to one area. There is a real great template uh, to blend across the subzones as well. So let's focus down. Let's drill down into each of the subzones of the Comtat de Barcelona. First of all, the Serra de Mar. Of course, you've got really 
the mountains of the sea here. So this is close to the Mediterranean Sea, of course, experiencing a Mediterranean climate. And it's just around 15 kilometers to the north of the capital city here of Barcelona. So this is really a lovely, unique and natural landscape in the middle of these wonderful rolling mountains and hills uh, with beautiful views of the city of Barcelona as well. Here's another picture for you. So the subzone itself is protected in winter from the cold northern winds by the Serrada de Marina that you'll see there on the picture. The vine cultivation is based on these real sort of sandy, uh, sandy permeable soils, which are called saulo, that you'll see on the slide as well. Now, these are really good at drainage. They're easy to work with. They're not very calcareous, so they're lower on their calcium carbonate content, but they do find that you get good acidities from these styles. The Charello grape variety is certainly the predominant, predominant variety in this subzone, and it sometimes is referred to as Panza Blanca. The largest and most important is next, and this is the Val de Noia Foch, which is this green outline on your map. So this is formed by a broad valley located between two mountain ranges. That's the coastal mountains of the Massi de Garraf and the pre-coastal mountain range, parallel and just a few kilometers inland from the Mediterranean coast. Now it's situated between uh, Barcelona and Tarragona, as you can see on your map. And the open valley slopes, um, the open valley rather slopes very gently down from the impressive rocky mass of the Montserrat that you see there in the background of your picture all the way to the sea. We have a multitude of mounds and small hills shaped by the drainage basins of the rivers Anoya and the Foch. Of course that's where the uh, etymology of the subzone comes from, the Val de Noia uh, Foch, so the two rivers here in play. Now the stabilizing influence of the sea along with the imposing protective wall again it really gives it protection against the north winds and that is because of that rather substantial Montserrat massif. So we have a more temperate climate. Yes we'll have still quite warm summers but we'll have mild winters and some rainfall. Now, kava here is produced from various plots over a diversity of microclimates due to the proximity of the coast altitude as well. Some of the vineyards here can go up to 800 meters. So, of course, we have a variety of grapes here. Charello is much more important towards the coast. Macabeo in the valleys and then Parada in the higher zones. Then just to the west of that is the Conca de Gaia subzone, and this crosses the regions of Tarragona and the Alt Camp, and it's an emb emblematic area where vineyards of Roman Hispania were established. Of course, vineyards are, are uh, located around the River Gaia, and that's a river that crosses this subzone. We have Mediterranean climates, mild winters, hot summers, and it's tempered by the sea breeze. It's quite similar for the most part to the Serra del Mar. Now we'll have an open plain to the sea, which slopes gently upwards to the Mediterranean, culminating in the peaks of the coastal mountain range, which is its identifying factor. Then just inland from the Conca de Gaia is the Serra de Prades, so this is north of the Tarragona province, bordering the region of the Leleda. And we find Carva vineyards here, uh, which are very intriguing. It's named after the Prades Mountains, which is a really wonderful morphostructural part of the Catalan pre-coastal mountain range. Lovely picture for you. Now, this the subzone is quite well known for its geological formation, which is a river basin or valley surrounded by mountains. 
And on the southern slope of the Serra del Prades, it really stands out. It's shaped by erosive action of the Francoli River and all streams and rivers that run into that. We looking at vineyards here being about 350 to 600 meters. It has a very particular microclimate where the influence of the Mediterranean blends from the winds of the interior, which are, of course, more continental focused. And that means we could call this kind of a transitional climate. Of course, the southern section being more Mediterranean and the northern section being more continental. So we have some cooling conditions from that altitude and continentality. So therefore, we often find white grapes which are well suited to cold zones. However, the real sort of standout local grape variety here is the native Trepat variety. It's a red grape variety that produces really kind of floral, fruity, slightly herbaceous wines. And often they are claimed to be quite distinctive in their nature. The last one of the Comtat de Barcelona is the Plado Ponent. Now, this is the innermost subzone of this whole region, sometimes called the Earth of Ponent, so the Terra de Ponent as well. So the inland climate here, which is more continental as it's away from the Mediterranean, has long hours of sunlight and a real high level of diurnal difference. The vineyards are located roughly around two to 400 meters, and it, the landscape's kind of quite gentle with some undulations. So that is the Comtat de Barcelona complete. We are now going to move more to the west, and when we pick up the Ebro River and head to its source in the Cantabrian mountain range, we'll find the Ebro Valley area for Carver, which is split into two parts. You'll see those just here, two subzones of Altebro and the Val de Chiazo down in the southern section. So we're going to look at both of those areas. We are very much in a continental climate here, which tends to be sort of warm to hot and of course quite bitterly cold winters. The Alto Ebro is the first that we will look at. This is the upper Ebro, located in the western sector of the Ebro Valley. It's a wide territory framed by mountain ranges. Of course, if you have done your Rioja revision, you'll know that this is very much the Cantabrian mountain is the defining topographical feature to the north, and the Sierra de Demanda is the defining topographical feature to the south. And this is what we find in the middle. So it is the Alt Ebro zone. It's a rather transitional climate. Um, we would say that we have continental with some Atlantic influence uh, and vineyards are found roughly at an altitude of around 600 meters. Now you'll see here, here's uh, the Marcus de Riscal um, winery designed of course by Frank Gehry. So we know we're in the heart of Rioja when we are looking at this region. Then as we come down the Ebro Valley, heading past the end of the Rioja zone where Alfaro is situated, we come towards Zaragoza. And this is the Aragonese area. And these are the vineyards of the Chierzo Valley. And this area uh, is quite famous around the uh, municipalities of Einzon and Carinena. So what about this area? So the subzone is located in the interior of the peninsula, as we know. Cold winters, hot summers, and diurnal big swings. The most notable feature here is the wind that is called the Chierzo, which the etymology of the valley comes from. It's a cool, dry, and strong wind which contributes to the dry climate in this area. So that's the completed area, those two subzones within the Ebro Valley. We now come down to really all the way towards the southwest of Spain, around the cities of Badajoz and Merida. So this is the old famous sort of uh, uh, the Plata, the Silver Road area. And we find an area which is called the Viñedos de Almendralejo. So this is um, a small area for Carver. 
but it is in the Badajoz province in the Tierra de Barros region. That's what it looks like. So it's on practically flat relief located in an altitude roughly at about 200 to 400 meters. And the vineyards enjoy a fairly dry climate, mild winters and high temperatures in summer, often uh, exacerbated by the action of a warm wind known locally as the Salano, often linked to the Azores High anticyclone, which affects this area. And then finally, the area that currently has no name. It is just often widely referred to as the Levant Zone or the Eastern Highlands in the municipality of Requena. You might know the Dio of Utwell Requena, which is famous for Bobal. So this is located in the interior of the Valencia province and it lies between the Mediterranean Sea and the Castilian Mazetta. Constituting, constituating a small island plateau, sorry, small inland plateau located between 600 and 900 meters in altitude. Its rounded shape is delimited to the south by a great sweep of the river Cabriel. And then also by the north, uh, the Iberian series or Sierras of the Molon. So you've got a real sort of dry Mediterranean climate, which leads towards a bit of continentality. And that's due to the altitudes here, which can reach fairly high, as mentioned earlier. We're about 70 clicks from the Mediterranean Sea. Big diurnal differences are found here as well. So there you are. That is a view of all the subzones of the Carva region, spanning from the Comtat de Barcelona, the Ebro Valley, and also down towards the southwest and the Levant zone as well. Please let me know if you have any comments and questions. What do you think they should call the Levant zone, which sits on that border between the Castilian Mazetta and Valencia? What should be its name? Answers on a postcard, please. Please do join me for the next video, which we look at the key grape varieties in Carver. This video, along with four, five, six, and seven, are available only to those of you that subscribe to my e-learning portal over at www.winewithjimmy.com. I've been Jimmy Smith. Until next time, ciao for now. Goodbye.